Hey y'all, so today we are talking virtual and augmented reality. This is going to be a bit of a different video than you're used to coming from me. I typically stick to tactical in-engine or in 3D content creation software tutorials. This is going to more just be getting our viewers up to speed with what's happening in the XR industry. I won't spend a ton of time defining terms like HMD, XR, VR, AR, etc. I just want to jump right into where is the industry right now? Where are we headed and what am I excited about? So the first thing that I want to address, because I think it's clear how enthusiastic I am about XR as an industry as a whole, but there are a few problems that I see in this space. And those problems I want to make sure that we touch on first. So let me move myself out of the way. So one of the main problems that I see is that I continue to see solutions marketed to the individual consumer that are being priced for industrial use cases, if that makes sense. So you see a headset that's going to be, let's just say $1,000. That's a, a relatively high-end gaming VR headset right now, a Valve Index or something comparable. The issue with that is even at the $1,000 price, you're now comparing that to, do I want a new iPhone or do I want this headset? Or do I want a new laptop for school or do I want this headset? And a VR gaming headset at that price point is just not going to be viable for a lot of people to use solely for entertainment purposes. Whereas the, the other options that we just talked through, a phone, a tablet, a laptop, all have a lot more utility that you can drive from them. So that's one thing is that we've got to get the price comparable to something like a console. If it's going to be used for gaming, it needs to be priced for gaming. I do feel like VR, I've heard a couple of the, the naysayers, let's just say, say that they've seen VR come in different waves over the last decade or two or three, and each time the wave has come and gone, and then people have moved on. I don't feel like that is what's happening right now. I think that VR has really taken a strong foothold in certain areas that we'll talk about in just a bit here. I wouldn't say that VR for gaming that only applies to gaming is a viable track right now. I wouldn't say that that is a wave that is coming in and crescendoing. I feel like the VR headsets that I'm seeing that are the most useful and used are going to typically fall into use cases that evolve to something more than just games. Augmented reality, I feel like can be seen as just a gimmick, let's say. Uh, it's just important that within augmented reality technology, that it's being used to truly enhance and not just be uh, a nice little pop of AR just for the sake of innovation, right? You really want augmented reality to be useful in some way. The last one I think is the most egregious in our market and I feel like has led to a lot of uh, distrust, let's just say, and I feel like that is misaligned marketing and product releases. So the one that I go back to often is probably the HoloLens. I would also say the Magic Leap falls into this, Google Glasses fall into this, Google Cardboard falls into this. There are a lot of products that, whether it be intentional or not, tend to show a, a headset, a head-mounted display on the viewer from the perspective of a third person inside of the room watching this person experience the headset but being able to see what they're seeing in the headset in front of them. And in doing that has really misaligned the expectation of the end user when they put that device on for something like the field of view. Um, HoloLens one was one that I still recall putting on. I'd seen all this awesome marketing and I had it on and I just could not get over the clear edges of my view that I could not see past any type of virtual display, any data. And I think if we don't realign marketing and extraordinarily transparent specs on hardware uh, with the end consumer, that it could continue to build mistrust. So we just want to make sure that we nip that in the bud and ensure that hardware releases moving forward are properly communicated what those devices can support and can't from an end user experience, a UX perspective. So current state of VR, uh, as I mentioned, it's really struggling as a pure gaming platform. We had two or three decently sized virtual reality game studios here in Dallas, Texas, 
Uh, I don't believe any of them are still around as a VR studio these days. It's a difficult market, and it's really all getting back to accessibility, both monetarily and from a hardware technology perspective. So monetarily, I feel like the accessibility that we've talked about of a user picking between a laptop and a headset is just not reasonable. Um, you have some headsets coming out that are in the thousands of dollars that are just not viable for the end consumer. So there's that level of accessibility that is not there. Then you have the accessibility of, I have a valve index sitting on my wall, but to get that out, to plug it in, to run it, get steam up, get inside the game and hit go, and then experience the game, then end the game, then unplug everything, bundle it all back up, put it on my wall, shut down the computer. I spend half of the time, if I have a 30 minute window for gaming, which is often the case as a dad of three, I'll end up spending 15 of my 30 minutes just doing setup and takedown. And that to me means that it's not accessible to me as a viable option for gaming. A phone, on the other hand, I can pull my phone out and in about four seconds, I can have a game pulled up and play it. And then I hit the power button and my phone goes away. So there's a very big difference in accessibility between gaming on a mobile device or a tablet or a Steam Deck even versus a tethered VR headset. What I do see overwhelmingly is that virtual reality is succeeding as an industrial training tool. Uh, looking at hardware like the Vario, the Pimax, uh, HTC also has some high-end options. It's really doing well in simulation, training. Um, I worked in the aerospace industry for a while and seeing a pilot put a headset on and saying, hey, this a pillar to my left shoulder is three inches too far forward. I can't see what's out the window. That's amazing feedback that saves a ton of money and time uh, to have a surgeon practice a procedure a hundred times in a headset before attempting it on a person can be saving lives. I mean, that that's where it really creates value. And that's where it really makes sense to have an industrially priced headset is for an industrial use case where you're saving time lives, money, etc. All right, now I'll just move myself over here. The market I do think is getting closer to a viable hardware release that will allow for more mass adoption of virtual reality in a typical home. I do think it's going to have to be closer to that three to $500 range that we've talked about to compete against something like a PS5. Um, so that's really where it's got to get to. And that's why if you tuned into this video, just to see, hey, I don't know what headsets are out there and I want to get a VR headset. Many years ago, my answer would have been, wait, it's not quite there yet, don't spend the money. However, my answer as of today would be, I would personally get a Quest 3. Uh, it has hand tracking, it has controllers, it has high fidelity. Uh, it's very easy to develop on. You can plug it into your desktop to get some extra power to that headset. There's a lot of goodness within it, and I find it to be the easiest thing to develop for and test on whenever I'm iterating on a VR experience. Current state of AR. So I'll start off with the caveat of smartphones are relatively accessible. I say that knowing that I live in a metropolitan area of Dallas, Texas, where it's relatively easy to get to and find a smartphone. It doesn't have to be one that's owned by you, but one to rent or to leverage. Uh, they're around. I don't want to make that blanket statement because I can't speak on behalf of, of every geographic area. Um, but where I live, smartphones are relatively accessible. Now, I feel like augmented reality head mounted displays so far, which would be the head mounted AR devices versus the smartphones that you're holding in your hand, have by and large, in my view, failed. I feel like as a business operation, you have the HoloLens 1, HoloLens 2, Magic Leap, Google Glasses. I could go on with even more examples, but all of these groups have slowly shut their doors. Uh, I can't think of any that are active right now that have a, a legacy history behind them in iteration and headsets. Now, I don't want the term failed to come across as entirely negative. Uh, a failed piece of technology, meaning uh, the companies that developed them did not see enough return on investment to continue investing in those, to me is still fantastic because it drives technology forward. It allows us to iterate more 
and it's moving us in the direction of where we're getting to today which is where along comes Project Orion from Mark Zuckerberg and Meta, uh, a product that they've been working on for many, many years that seems to be really incredible. Uh, I'm excited to see what comes with that and when it releases, when we get more information. We also have the Android project from Samsung and Google that's an XR headset called, uh, the name right now I think is Project Muhan, stands for Infinity in Korean, if I'm not mistaken. And the idea there is that there's a lot more artificial intelligence integrated into the headset to help you through conversation in your day-to-day -day life while wearing it. I feel like AR is tried and true within the games field. So if you're looking to develop a game, an augmented reality game is totally fair. Uh, it does still need to be more than a gimmick, if that makes sense, and, and really make it a meaningful mechanic. Um, but things like Pokemon Go have made that obvious that AR is an enjoyable mechanic to some degree. Augmented reality is used very widely in tools. So things like the Ikea app where you can place furniture in your room and see if you're going to like it. Measurement apps to measure walls. Product assembly to put together your next fan that you purchase. Google Translate, etc. Uh, I also bring up the point here that all of these cameras collecting all of this data, theoretically, if the end user wants to allow the creator of the headset access to that data, it could be used to train in advance AI, creating new neural networks that are continually being updated with new data of right and wrong, etc. So there's a lot of really good speed at which AR can iterate and be used because of all the data it's gathering all the time. So AR is used in industrial locations for driving more efficiencies, though HMDs overall have not been adopted very readily within that space, mainly just due to the extra weight that you're putting on an operator's head on a machine shop floor um, for multiple hours on end. Uh, it's not quite there yet on the weight to efficiency increase ratio. However, handhelds are actually being used quite a bit with the trade-off there being that you're sacrificing a hand or two even while holding up that AR device, then needing to set that down or operate with the free hand. So it does cause some limitations, but in general increases efficiency enough that those limitations are worth it. Then you have in its own category, a self-described not AR, not MR, not VR device, but really a spatial computing device, the Apple Vision Pro. Um, this is one that is notoriously, if you will, priced at $3,500. So it is very inaccessible to the average person. Uh, purchasing this would be purchasing uh, this instead of your next super high-end gaming rig. So you really need to believe in the vision of where this headset is going and what it's going to enable you to do. Now the headset does allow for AR, MR, and VR all within this headset. It works within the Apple ecosystem. So if you have up your MacBook on the left and you have your iPhone on the right, and you have this headset on, there are ways to interoperate between those, uh, which is really neat. There's also a new, more intuitive UI system that really entirely removes the need for any type of controller other than just your body or your, your voice even. Uh, it's really meant to be used as a personal device. So that's the one differentiator of this headset I feel that is ushering in a new wave of headsets is it's meant to be the next smartphone, truly. The idea is that this is your headset made for you, made for your eyes to use. It knows you and it understands what you want to be doing next. And it's meant to be used in that type of a utility and that type of a useful way. The main issue here is just that it's struggling to gain traction due to price tag. I personally don't have one. I think if it came down into the realm of a Valve Index, that's probably where I would see something like the rumored Apple Vision Pro Lite that we've talked about or Apple Vision Lite, whatever it's going to be. Um, if the price tag gets closer to that $1,000 mark, it's still out of range of what I've talked about with gaming, but it is in the range of could this be as useful to me as a new tablet? And that gets really interesting because this is not meant to be a gaming headset. It's meant to be a spatial computing device that is your personal computer that you can wear that happens to be able to play a game if you would like. So my projection 
in the near future, I would say the next 24 months, is that I really do expect to see the headset release that will usher in a wave of mass adoption of VR. Now, what headset that's going to be and who is going to manufacture it is still up for debate. I'll be very interested to see where things land at the end of this year, moving into next year as well. Um, some of the releases, such as Project Muhan, have been rumored online. I think it was XR Today was saying is intended to be released at the end of 2025 or 26. I'll be interested to see if that happens. They were even teasing this headset further today, quite literally, at Galaxy Unpacked. So I would expect for that to continue building up steam right up until that release. So let's see where everything shakes out. I think the idea of the spatial computing MR space with Muhan, Orion, Apple Vision Pro Lite are all super interesting. And I truly think if you've been in this area or in this arena for a while and you've been iterating and waiting for that moment for things to pop off, it feels like we're getting there. And I'm really excited to see what comes next. The nice thing is, especially making games inside of an engine like Unity, is that I know as I continue to build things in OpenXR with the XR hands, XRI, TK, all of that's going to be applicable as new headsets start to come out. And I'm very excited to continue this journey with you. So let me know, what headsets do you think are going to be impactful in the upcoming year or years? When do you feel like the industry is really going to start taking off in home-based VR and AR for that matter? I would love to hear more from you guys. I hope you're having a great day. Hope this was helpful for you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one.